Alright kids, it's a lovely sunny day. We're going to have an amazing trip to Il Fayoum to visit Ember Brahm Church. Yay! Would you like a sandwich or some crisps, Uncle David? I packed some things for the long journey. I'm not hungry right now, but thank you, Hannah. These crisps are so delicious. Mmm! Oh, Mark, you haven't stopped eating crisps since we got in the car. Maybe you should slow down. I love crisps so much. I just can't stop eating them. They're so delicious. We're nearly there. Ready to go? Oh no. My tummy... My tummy hurts so much. Mark, I told you not to eat so many crisps. Oh dear, Mark. Come with me. Let's try to help you out. Sit here for some fresh air. You must learn to have some self-control, Mark. Eating too much junk food, or too much of anything, in fact, isn't good for you. This does not feel good. What does self-control mean, Uncle David? It means, Mark, that you need to have control over yourself and the things you choose to do. Wait here for me. I'll go and see if I can get you a drink, as it's too hot. I'm sorry, Mark. I wish I could help you make you feel better. Let's try the magic glasses on. Maybe that'll distract you from the pain. Maybe. Here you go. I'm not sure what we'll see here. Are you the Amber Abram? <laughs> yes, I am Amber Abram. Hello, Hannah and Mark. How are you? Are you feeling all right, Mark? Hello, Amber Abram. I'm a little better now, thank you. I ate too many crisps in the car and got a stomachache. Uncle David said I need self-control, but I'm not sure I understand what that means. Ah, I see. Uncle David is a very wise man. Self-control is so important. Well, how about if I tell you a little bit about me? And maybe my story will help explain what we mean by self-control. Yes, please tell us, Amber Brown. When I was born, my name was Paul, or Bolis in Arabic. I was born in Egypt and my parents love God with all their hearts. They taught me to love God too, and took me to church often, to learn and grow in Christ. When I was your age, my mother became sick and soon passed away. This was a hard time, but I learned to pray more and more as God always gave me comfort and joy in his presence. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. Well done, dear Bolus. I truly love to learn and pray the psalms and the hymns. So I was a good student and the bishop ordained me as a deacon in the church. As I grew up, my friends and my classmates began to work and start their own families. But all I ever wanted was to live in constant, quiet prayer with God. So when I was 19 years old, I went to El Muharraq Monastery, where I was ordained as a monk by the name of Paul Gabriel El Muharraq. 19 years old? Wow! How did you do that? Being a monk seems impossible. Can seem that way, Mark, but I was always very simple. I worked and I prayed to always be patient and have self-control. And my focus was on caring for those in need rather than myself. There it is again, self-control. Could you tell me more about it now, please, Amba Abram? I would love to, dear Mark. Self-control is a fruit of the Holy Spirit. Wait a minute, a fruit? 
like apples and watermelon are fruit. Can you eat self-control? <laughs> no, Hannah. Let me try to explain a little bit better what happens when you plant a small apple seed in the ground and water it every day and give it lots and lots of sunlight. Oh, I know. It grows into a huge tree. Exactly, Ma. And Hannah, if you're very patient with your tree and take good care of it for many years, what eventually grows on the tree? Hmm, leaves and apples. Fruit grows on the tree. Yes. The small apple seed is like the Holy Spirit planted in our hearts. When we feed our spirits with prayer and the Word of God, it grows and grows like a beautiful tree. And soon, fruit starts to appear. But instead of apples, the fruit of the Holy Spirit is beautiful things like love, patience, kindness, and self-control. Ah, oh, I see it, Abba Abraham. So self-control is a different kind of fruit, not the eating kind. <laughs> now you got it. Self-control, a fruit of the Holy Spirit, means that through the grace of God, you have control over what you eat, what you do. So, instead of eating all the chips at once, I can control myself and stop when I'm full? That's a great example. Good job, Mark. So, after I was in the monastery for quite some time, the bishop asked me to go and spend some time with him. I asked the bishop for permission to go back to my quiet life in the monastery. Before I left, he ordained me as a priest. Were you happy to go back to the monastery, Amba Abram? I was, although I didn't get to enjoy the peace and the quiet very long. After a few years, I was appointed to be the leader of the monastery. You became the abbot. I bet you were amazing. <laughs> no, Hannah, I told you. I was very simple. Every good thing was thanks to God's grace. It was the fruit of his Holy Spirit. We opened the monastery to those who had need of food and shelter. And many young men came and fell in love with our quiet life of prayer. Soon, we had 40 new monks. Oh, Amba Abram, how wonderful. But wasn't it hard to give so much away? I thought monks didn't have a lot of food and clothing to begin with. It was such a blessing to share all that we had with our brothers and sisters. But you're right, Hannah, it wasn't always easy. The devil was certainly furious when he saw our doors open to those in need and visitors to the monastery falling in love with God. So the devil led some of the monks to believe that it was a waste of money to give goods to those in need and rebelled against them. Oh no! So what happened then? After five years of leading the monastery, I had to leave. A few of my brothers at the monastery came with me. How could this happen? Abuna Bulis, you can't leave us. Don't worry, my friend, for we know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love him. He will care for us. The four of us are coming with you, Abuna. We love you. Yes, we won't let you go alone. But, Abuna, why is this trouble happening to you? All you did was show love to others. But we don't need to be afraid. Jesus Christ told us this would happen. He said, in the world, you will have trouble. But be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. So we must be of good cheer, my sons. Now, let us begin our journey, for it is written in Act 14.22, we must go through many hardships to enter the kingdom of God. Unbelievable! 
So what happened then, Amber Brown? For about one year, we travelled to different monasteries and met amazing monks. Finally, we were welcomed to stay at El Paramos Monastery, a monastery surrounded by people who were not Christian. Oh, that must have been hard to live there, right, Amber Brown? Oh no, it was lovely. I devoted my time to prayer and study and served the people around the monastery as much as I could, loving them and sharing whatever I had with them. Wait a minute, I thought you said the people living near the monastery were not Christians? Of course I served them. We are all God's children, Hannah. When we serve one another, it's as if we serve God himself. We must serve all people, no matter who they are or how they feel about us. This is true love. So, does this mean I should serve Hannah, even when she annoys me? Hey! Ha ha ha. Yes, indeed. Nothing gets in the way of love. Anyways, after about ten years of living in El Baramos Monastery, I was ordained the Bishop of El Fayum. And you became Amber Brown. Yes. Let's go for a walk around the church. Are you feeling better, Mark? I totally forgot about not feeling well. I was too focused on your story, Amber Brown. Thank you. Let's walk. So, as a bishop, I'm sure you got a ton of special treatment, right? People tried to treat me differently, but I couldn't let them. I never understand why people think that some humans should be treated better than others. We are all God's children. No human is more valuable than another. I remember one Easter feast. Is the table ready to feed all who are in need of a good meal today? Yes, Amber Brown. This table is for them. Why are these tables different? Well, this one is for you and your guests, Amber Abram. You're the bishop, after all. Why? Why did you offer me better food than the one that you offered our brother in the poor? Anything we do to the poor, as if we're doing to God, we must offer them the best of what we have. The Lord said in Matthew 25, 40, truly I tell you, Whatever you did for one of the least of these brothers and sisters of mine, you did for me. I have sinned, our father, the bishop. Forgive me. So we should care for those in need as if we are caring for God, the king of the universe? That's amazing, Amber Abram. Exactly, Mark. We must stop believing we are better than one another for a reason. Another time, People wanted me to spend money on my bishop home. My father, Amber Abraham, every time we gave you money to renew your bishop house, you gave the money to the poor. But your building is very old and needs this money for repairs. My beloved children, I have already built a lovely new home with this money. Oh, great. Where is it? It's in heaven, of course. In heaven? Yes, when you share with your brothers and sister and me, you gather great treasures in heaven. In Proverbs 28, 27, God tells us that he who gives the poor will not lack. I don't need a fancy home when my brother in here needs food and shelter. That's another amazing story. But Amber Abram, what about if you don't have any money to give? How can you serve others then? Dear Hannah, great question. Anything we give in love is so precious. Whether it's a kind smile, encouraging words, or a helping hand. I see, so I don't need to wait until I get a job to serve others. I can start right now. Yes, always try to think about others before yourself. The more you serve others, the more joy 
you will find in your own life, Hannah. I actually have another good story. When the Khedive Tawfiq, ruler of Egypt, visited Al Fayyum, we threw a great lunch party. I was sitting very close to the Khedive, and I did not eat anything except salad. And when the Khedive asked me why, I said that today is Friday, and the Christians fast every Wednesday and Friday. I always practice self-control on every occasion possible. So he then ordered me some fruit and asked me to meet with him again. Thank you, Anva Abram, for teaching me about self-control and for your incredible stories. Yes, Mark, especially when you feel angry at me. That's the most important time you need to remember self-control. We just saw Amber Abram. Wow. He was truly an amazing saint. He was loved by all people, Christians and non-Christians, rich and poor, old and young. He never ever turned away someone in need. You know, Hannah and Mark, when Amber Abram was older, he became seriously ill due to a problem in his leg. I'm so sorry, Amber Brown. The doctors are saying that the only way to save you is to cut off your leg. God won't let it happen. I am sure he will prove these doctors wrong. After two months, he recovered completely and went out to the church praising God. The bishop's house was very crowded with people celebrating his recovery holding palm leaves and waving olive branches with joy. Finally, on the 3rd of Pa'una, June the 10th, 1914, our Blessed Father departed to paradise. Wow, thank you, Abuna. We learned so much from Amber Abram. Bye, Hannah and Mark. Come again soon. see Uncle David looking for us. Here you are kids, some drinks. Maybe you feel better when drinking something. Thank you Uncle David. I already feel better now and I've learned about self-control. Well done Mark. Self-control is a fruit, fruit of the, the Holy, Holy Spirit. Spirit. Uh, wow, yes.